Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Primetime News Bulletin here on the Joy News Channel. Coming up, government assures residents of Kumasi it is in control of the security situation in the city and elsewhere around the country. We'll be going over live to assess the security situation on the ground following two straight nights of attacks by suspected armed robbers. Catholic Bishops' Conference weigh in on teacher strike and urge government to ensure a speedy resolution. Accra Mayor and presiding member of Metropolitan Assembly settle feud following intervention by Sector Minister. We'll bring you an idea of what access to healthcare is like at the Nsawam prison. And in business, Barclays MD gets top job at Stanchat Africa. All these plus sports and showbiz coming up. News at 8 with Israel Live. In our very first story, government is assuring the public, especially those in the Ashanti region who have been victims of mass robbery attacks this week that it is in control of the security situation. Addressing the presidential press call at the Flagstaff House after a briefing of the president by the security chiefs, Minister of Information and Media Relations, Mama Yariga said government will do everything, including pairing the police with the military. The president has uh, encouraged the security agencies to uh, increase their strength size on the ground to extend the uh, monitoring and surveillance and uh, generally ensure that they are everywhere on the ground so that people and residents in Kumasi will feel safe and in fact will be uh, protected. We, uh, have a very stable situation. Yeah. There shouldn't be any cause for alarm. The security chiefs clearly have their uh, handle on all the issues that they ought to be dealing with. And so my appeal to the media especially is um, to try and then give accurate reportage of uh, the situation on the ground. We are satisfied with the efforts that the police and their partners, the army, are making to secure all of us. Investigation so far um, doesn't really establish any um, particular uh, uh, robbery. And I don't know if you in the media, you have picked up that after the uh, report of shooting incidents, whether there was any particular robbery incident, we don't have that yet. And they effected some arrest and then they screened them and then placed about 70 of them before uh, the courts and then some of them have been remanded by the courts whilst uh, further investigations are ongoing. Now, Heming Tiria is joining us with the very latest on the security situation in Kumasi. Good evening to you, Heming. Can you first give us details about another attack which we're told happened last night? Yes, uh, Israel. In that particular attack, uh, I was, for instance, inundated with several calls from residents uh, who, uh, one way or the other, wanted to report uh, this particular incident to me. And according to eyewitnesses, some of who witnessed this particular incident, uh, it happened at a airport runabout, and those at uh, Ashanti Newtown also experienced uh, similar uh, occurrence. And unfortunately, there were reports that the, some armed men were also at Senegia and then uh, uh, Bantima, but that one police uh, uh, has refuted that one that indeed nothing of that sort happened at Bantima. There were police shouts. Uh, for people with uh, 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 wrong signals or uh, alarms that yeah, armed men coming, but that was not the case uh, as, we, as we have been told in that particular uh, incident. All right, we're also told the police have seen stepped up measures to avert yet another attack. Tell us what these measures are. Yes, uh, 
yes, uh, when you are in Kumasi, uh, you can see this uh, heavy presence of police uh, patrolling the, the streets of Kumasi. And uh, it's not only uh, police presence, but uh, police are using uh, armored vehicles as well. And the Ashanti Regional Police Headquarters uh, remained one of the busiest uh, places in the Kumasi metropolis with the arrival of the uh, police, uh, of the, the Director General of Police Operations, uh, DC OP John Kudalo, uh, who was there to, uh, he himself, to, to lead operations. And uh, beyond this, uh, police says that they have put the entire Kumasi metropolis uh, under 24 uh, surveillance, where they will monitor activities of miscreants and also ensure that uh, residents are given the needed security. And beyond this, uh, there's one thing I learned. Uh, for instance, the police have started a special exercise where they seized unregistered motorbikes, and uh, owners were also arrested in that particular regard. So once you are able to produce uh, documents uh, covering the unregistered lines of uh, motorbikes, then you are, uh, you are free to, to go with those uh, bike, uh, bikes. And beyond this, the regional police command, I also learned, uh, have put a hold on any uh, street march or street protest. Uh, for instance, the coalition of concern to just were at the regional police command uh, to seek the uh, assistance of the police to embark on the march, uh, protest march on Monday. But the regional police commander, I was told, said uh, because the situation in the region was so volatile, there was no way that he was going to sanction this particular uh, event. So you can see that. Uh, police are really on top of this matter. But uh, after much of all these arrangements by the police, residents uh, still feel that they are not safe, and some of them are resourcing to going home early uh, to avoid being trapped uh, by, by these armed men who uh, have since Tuesday uh, have been uh, taking over streets of Kumasi, Israel. Right, thank you very much. You heard Ohiming to uh, joining us with the very latest from the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi, and we'll stay with the situation and bring you the very latest as and when it becomes available. Back here in Accra, the Accra Region Police today picked up some 35 suspected criminals in an operation it says was informed by intelligence they picked up. The raid was conducted by a joint task force of about 72 officers from the Nima Divisional Police with support from the Regional Operations Team. Marion Ture has the rest of the story. The suspects were smoked out from their hideouts in Nima, Malamata Market, Newtown and the railway lines at Jolu. The police recovered a laptop, wrapped substances suspected to be Indian hemp, mobile phones, various implements and electrical gadgets. Some of the suspects are being held at the Nima police station at Kutubabi. ACP Timothy Yosabonga is the Nima Divisional Police Commander. Yes, we have the hideout because we have our intelligence officers and we have informants who also support us with information. Once in a while we do this based on intelligence that we gather and this time the police administration wants it to be part of our daily activities which we have to be embarking on this exercise quite often to make sure that the communities are rid of these uh, criminals. ACP Bonga adds, though crime is down for the first quarter of the year, the police will remain proactive. We don't have to wait for the crimes to start going up before we move. Uh, we need to be proactive. Preventive is more ideal than the uh, aftermath of the event. So we need to get rid of them. We need to make them uncomfortable in the communities so that the communities will live in peace. He concluded that their aim as a service is to make criminals uncomfortable in their hideouts so residents in communities will feel safe to go about their duties. A report by Marian Toure. Now, parents in the Brahafu region have slammed governments for its failure to end the ongoing teacher strike. The parents are especially unhappy because, according to them, government simply ignored all warning signs about the impending action. They say governments must step up efforts to quickly end the stalemate. Nestor Kafui Ajuma's report from Sunyani. The parents bemoaned the attitude of successive governments towards addressing issues concerning teachers in the country. 
They do not understand why parliamentarians and ministers of state should be given large sums of money for accommodation at the expense of conditions of service for teachers. The angry parents further threatened to hit the streets in protest if the authorities do not work out this problem for their children to get back to school. But I'm surprised about the government move that the, the national service personnel and the other workers on campus should go and invigilate the students whilst writing the exams. And I don't think that that will solve the problem. The problem is that the government should facilitate, be ready tomorrow and today to meet the workers, to meet the teachers so that the problem will be solved. So that on Monday the teachers can go back to classroom and that will be the end of the case. <laughs> Meanwhile, most basic schools join news visited in the Sunyai municipality this morning were closed. The Catholic Bishops' Conference has meanwhile added its voice to pleas for striking teachers to return to the classrooms. The bishops who called on President Mahama the Flagstaff House today advised government to ensure this is achieved. We wish to appeal to all teachers to consider the plight of our beloved children and their future, as well as the future of, of our country, and return to the classrooms as soon as possible. We equally encourage Your Excellency to use your good offices to help resolve the impasse. Nobody benefits if a strike action is called. And the procedures for these negotiations are very clear. And we have met with these groups. And the Fair Wages Commission has come out and said it's prepared to sit with them and open negotiations on the issues that they want to put on the table. So rather than hold the whole country to ransom, I appeal to our teachers to go to the Fair Wages uh, uh, Commission and put their issues on the table so that they can be discussed and let us all continue uh, in, in, in harmony. The group officially informed the president that Pope Francis is now the new pope of the Catholic Church. President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference, Most Reverend Bishop Osei Bunsu, who led the group to the presidency, urged him to develop a long-term plan that will be followed by successive government. We are aware of the current crises facing our nation, such as the erratic electricity supply, water shortages, and the issue of national health insurance payments to mission hospitals. We wish to encourage you to do all you can to speedily bring these challenges to an end, to give some relief and comfort to Ghanaians in the shortest possible time. They also want the Professor and Sochwemi Committee's report on government's church partnership on education signed to enhance the quality of education in the country. President Mahama said government is already paying attention to all the issues raised. We are still pursuing the intention to establish a small mission in the Vatican uh, so that we can improve and bring closer uh, Ghana and the Vatican. And so we're waiting for a response. We've put in the necessary uh, request and we're waiting for a response. He assured government will not allow a recurrence of the recent episode where mission hospitals turned away NHIA subscribers for non-payment of services. He, however, implored them to help ensure that mission hospitals eliminate irregular claims. The president also granted audience to the various Muslim groups who were at the Flagstaff House to discuss their role in the national prayer and thanksgiving service. The groups led by the national chief imam included the Shai, Sunni and Tijaniya Muslim sect. For the Muslim prayer to be on the 5th of April, on a Friday. And so if that date is acceptable, we would uh, put it and we'll start the preparation towards it. There is a committee that is supposed to be working with the various groups to organize it, but we want to put it into the hands of you, the Muslim ulama, the chiefs, to decide how you want the day to be organized. He urged them to continue to foster peaceful coexistence, irrespective of religious beliefs. Gifty and Oapia for Joy News.
Now, it appears that current strike by teachers on government payroll will persist a while longer as there's been very little movement since the directive by the National Labor Commission. At least the Ghana National Association of Teachers has deferred any compliance to the directive until next week when it hopes to take a decision to end the strike. The NAT Council of Elders is expected to meet on Monday, March 25. The NLC, which has the powers of the High Court, has an option to go to the court to enforce its ruling, but it is unclear if the Commission will invoke that power. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Education is still appealing to the teachers to call off the strike while negotiations continue. The Appointments Committee of Parliament today began the vetting of Deputy Regional Ministers nominated by the President to the 10 regions. The nominees all pledged to help address the numerous challenges if approved. The first to appear was the Deputy Minister-designate for the Ashanti region, Samuel Ya Udusei, who spoke about the security challenges confronting the region lately. He was followed by the Brunahafu Deputy Minister-designate, Justice Samuel A.J., Queen Star Soya for the Central Region and Mavis Frimpong, Eastern Region. We're taking a break now. When we come back, we have more stories on Broadway. A raging feud between the presiding member of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly and the mayor appears to have been settled somehow by the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. A recent allegation about the squandering of 1.4 million cities is said to have been one of the many fallouts of the squabble. The sector minister, Kwesi Opong Fusu, however, managed to get the parties to settle their differences at an emergency meeting today. The assembly members at a meeting earlier this year are reported to have moved a motion for the removal of the presiding member. Desmond Ni Adubaini for allegedly undermining the mayor Alfred Van der Poy through a memo he was said to have written and sent to the chief of staff about happenings in the AMA. The allegations about misuse of funds published by the media are said to have been sourced from the memo. The local government and rural development minister cautioned the parties the fate and its fallouts have the tendency to ruin whatever good works the assembly may have done in the past four years. He threatened members' government would be forced to dissolve the assembly and call fresh elections if they persist in their squabbles. Indeed, the challenges confronting your assembly are daunting, and this calls for concerted efforts to address these issues. The government, central government, has the, 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 the power by law to intervene. Section 43-2A gives the president the power to dissolve or suspend an assembly and institute, institute a body to take over the functions of the duly composed assembly. The presiding member subsequently apologized in the presence of his colleagues and extended an olive branch to the mayor. I say sorry to all assemblies. <laughs> Any other official of this very house, I also say sorry. Now that everything is over now, I'm sure the assembly, the assembly members, the presiding member, the chief executive, we are all going to start another uh, 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 new leaf, which I'm sure is going to help Accra. It's going to develop Accra. So I'm very, very excited. Members of the assembly were happy about the minister's intervention. In fact, as for today's meeting, it's very exceptional. I'm very happy of what I saw today. Now peace has prevailed. Today's meeting has ended war. Well. I say has ended war. Well. Welcome to the fact that peace has reigned. And obviously, you know Ghana is a peace-loving country. And so I come to the assembly must also be an epitome of peace. I'm very happy that at the end of everything, both PM and the mayor of Accra come to compromise. They rounded off the meeting, which started in an atmosphere of tension with songs of praise. The worst place anyone could find themselves is in a prison where, in addition to the many luxuries that are denied inmates, 
Access to basic health care is virtually non-existent. That's what I'm saying has been to the Swan Prison, not as an inmate, but to find out what the situation is. A report reveals a case of disregard of prisoners' health, blamed vaguely on lack of resources. Access to proper and adequate medical care is generally a challenge in developing countries such as Ghana. It, however, gets even worse for prisoners because, unlike the free in society, there are restrictions to their movements. In the case of the Nsawan Mill prison, there is an additional challenge of overcrowding. It currently houses 3,565 inmates. Originally built for 851 inmates, access to healthcare is not the best. The infirmary or the average attends to 30 cases each day. But without a resident medical doctor, serious cases have to be referred to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. It's a big challenge for the infirmary staff as well. Um, a patient falls sick, he comes and uh, the medicines that you need to give to the person to probably alleviate the person's uh, uh, suffering are not there and so it becomes a big challenge, I must say. In most instances, however, the cases ended up in fatalities. The prison has recorded 13 HIV and AIDS cases, but the sufferers don't have access to ARVs. Head of the infirmary, DSP Thomas Anani explains, prison officers have to escort inmates to the nearest facility for treatment. We have been taking the prisoners there. Number one, we don't have means of transportation. So if you have all the glass at the disposal over here, I mean, taking them to that place to miss escort, it will either miss them. And the officers will be able to say the same as that. Even though inmates have been placed on NHIS, the officers say not all the conditions are covered. Once the sickness is not covered by the NHIS, then it means that it must be paid from the person's own source. Um, what we do, however, is that when we take somebody to hospital and the uh, NHIS cannot cater for the person's sickness, the prison's administration uh, looks within uh, looks for fund to pay for the person's uh, health care. Some hospitals have decided to withdraw their services uh, to some inmates and so uh, those people, when it happens, the uh, prison structure uh, within looks for some funds within the system to pay for the person's health because the person must be alive first before we look for probably uh, relatives to whatever uh, act, you know assistance they can give and so it's important, first of all, to save the person's life. So funds are sought within the prisons to pay for the person's uh, treatment. Deputy Director of Prisons, Akom Jedu Kwame, also laments the infirmary does not have qualified nurses, no dispensary technician, and inadequate beds for the clinic. The situation is almost the same at the male prisons, except that here, congestion is not a problem. The prison's ambulance is the same pickup truck used to convey bread. Um, when it comes to transporting uh, inmates to the hospital, we have a pickup which does that when it's available because the pickup is used for other purposes. We use it uh, to sell bread because of the vocational um, training we are having here. So when the pickup is available, we use the pickup, but when the pickup is not available, we take a taxi and take them to the hospital. You know, prison system is not like a school where you have a particular time for ad admission and a particular time for vacation. Every day, people get in. And so it is not easy to get all of them onto the National Health Insurance Scheme at a go. And so every now and then, people keep coming and you get a certain number of people who are not on the uh, National Health Insurance Scheme. And so until they are registered, it means that uh, the service would have to be catering for their health care uh, needs. They say until the situation is improved, living conditions for the inmates will continue to deteriorate. Etonamse, Joy News. Hundreds of young men and women eager to join the armed forces have besieged the premises of the Ghana Post at Ho in the Volta region, demanding Ghana Army recruitment forms. Prospective recruits rushed to the premises after it was announced that the forms were on sale. Many who were disappointed because the forms had run out refused to leave the premises. 
In the process, officers from the Ghana Police Service and Armed Forces had to be called in to control the crowd. The prospective recruits would still not budge, insisting they would not leave the post office premises. Some eventually found a place to perch, while others stayed in the queue all day. I was told yesterday around 9 o'clock a.m. that military funds are out. So I just, I came to the post office to see whether it's true or not. And full and behold, I came to them. I saw people in the queue and I asked them if it's true. So I was standing in the queue around that 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. when the manager came out. So he, he just said, uh, the farm has got finished, so they will bring some today. And I was here at 1 o'clock a.m. So now, I can't, I can't get it. We were told yesterday uh, new consignments will be coming like, like last night, but as of now, we haven't received any new consignments. That's what we've been told by the officials. And one crazy thing that is being alleged was um, people are trying to sell it over the price that Ghana Armed Forces asked them to sell it. And that's a problem also needs to be looked into. Vivian Adubwaitefe is the Volta Regional Marketing Manager of Ghana Post. Early this morning, uh, as usual, the whole premises was besieged with, you know, uh, what I'll say, people who wanted to buy the forms. And uh, the officer in charge of EMS told them that there is no consignment, but, you know, as angry as they are to buy the forms, they still thought we were deceiving them. So they are still loitering around the premises whilst normal work is also going on. Three suburbs in the greater Accra region, Choco, Manprobi, and Dansomang, have been identified as the most notorious areas for incidents of child abuse. The survey conducted by some medical students also indicated a high number of incidents in two other regions. This has prompted calls for policies to ensure children are protected from such abuse. The Ashanti region was ranked second, whilst the central region was noted as the region with the third highest number of child abuse cases. The three regions in the north, however, recorded the least number of defilement cases. Well, in Accra, we realize that Choco, Mamprobi, and Dansuman are, are hot spots for defilement. Also coming up, probably communities in Teshi and Abadi, and these are from personal reports of, my doc of doctors working in the field. And so these are the hot spots. And of course, it's a dynamic situation. We need to continuously research it because it could change. Ghana, for the first time, is also joining the international community to eliminate child abuse with the declaration of April as International Child Abuse Month. It would be marked by the Kolebu Child Abuse Center in collaboration with some civil society organizations as a means of raising awareness about the problem. At the launch, Dr. Nelly Anan AJ, specialist pediatrician, advised that government departments coordinate the collection of data on reported cases and offer victims follow-up visits. A member of the Network Against Child Abuse, DSP Elvis Sadongo, said during the month of April, there will be a sequence of community forums to educate the populace on issues of child abuse. Um, we would also um, do presentations um, in the month of May on some topical issues like the medical and psychosocial issues in child abuse prevention. Now we'll also be looking at evidence gathering from the police angle. We'll be looking at the laws themselves. We need to see whether they can stand, stand the test of, of, of current happenings. Uh, so we'll take a, a deeper look at the laws and to see whether they are responding adequately to the needs of the child as in their rights and so on. The month of April has globally been set aside to highlight child abuse and neglect. In business tonight, supply of fuel to the Volta region in Akosombo through pipelines managed by the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company should resume by the end of July. Bust officials gave the assurance when the sector minister visited the company's depot at Atimpoku in the eastern region. They also highlighted siphoning of fuel from the pipelines as one of the major challenges confronting the operations. The company's network of pipelines ensures prompt and efficient delivery of petroleum products to various parts of the country. 
The disruption to the supply lines which occurred sometime in July has however meant that BOST has had to find alternative means to serve the affected areas. Officials use the opportunity to talk about their challenges and how they are confronting them. They also indicated BOST would require about $100 million for expansion of its network of pipelines. The expansion should enable them to increase the number of tankers they serve from between 12 to 15 trucks a day to 35 trucks. If you are able to uh, beef it up to 35, then we'll be able to supply enough product to the north and then use reverse flow to supply this place. That is up to the end of July. But regarding the construction of the 212 line pipeline, we have already engineered and procured one pipeline. We need a second one. We also want to construct four river barges with their tug boats. And then we also want to uh, put up the CCTV thing. So it's a full package. The minister committed government support and reminded them of the additional responsibility to transmit Jubilee field gas to the rest of the country. We have to make sure that we find a solution to address pipeline security. It cannot be that there's no solution to address the daily uh, vandalizing of pipeline and losing products that turn out to be so much costly to bust. We should find the solution that will make sure that people who engage in that, whether they are out or in or where, are brought to book. If you look at the gas infrastructure project and the role that BOSS is going to play in all of the discoveries, making sure that you, you expand the storage facilities, not only here, but in the western region, uh, your project at Pumpuni, and the need to, for us to make sure we move that project forward so that the LPG and other liquids that are coming from the Ghana gas is received on time. Is something that is very important to them. The tour also took the minister and his entourage to the Volta River Authority's Ponds Generating Station where he was taking round to familiarize himself with the operations. Former VRA boss Dr. Raku Brobe says tariff increases requested by the utility providers cannot be justifiable. He says the current tariffs are more than enough and that the charges should match the quality of services. He also accused stakeholders of w withholding vital information from consumers and policy makers, thereby compounding the challenges faced by the sector. Dr. Brobe, Raku Brobe believes over-reliance on thermal energy is a major contributory factor to the current electricity crisis and called for the promotion of solar energy. And there will be more on that particular story. But right now, the managing director of Barclays Bank, Benjamin Dabra, is moving to Standard Chartered Bank Africa as its new regional chief risk officer by July this year. His resignation will, however, from Barclays Bank will however take effect from mid-June, having served the bank as the managing director since November 2008. Barclays, in an official statement copied to Joy Business, noted his successor will be announced in due course. He is credited with turning around the bank from a lost position to a profitable one. Right now in the studio, I'm joined by uh, George Riafi from uh, Joy Business, who has been following uh, the story for, for quite a while now. What else can you tell us about this uh, move by Benjamin Dabra from Barclays to Standard Chartered Bank? It comes at uh, quite a surprise. Well, many people might want to read several meanings into this, but for him, he sees it as an opportunity to serve on a, a bigger platform. I mean, for him, again, you know, he doesn't keep long in a certain position for a long while. So for him, he believes that he's made his mark in Ghana, and therefore the time is right to move on to a bigger platform where he can also make, I mean, a very strong impact. His background is risk management, actually, so maybe going back to his first laugh. Yeah. But you, you, can't, you can't help, uh, you know, you can't avoid people reading meanings mm. into it and, you know, speculating. Mm. I would want, for once, want to speculate that mm. it would have something to do with a change in ownership. Well, at, I, I, at, I don't uh, think so. Israel trying to pick up several information from different quarters, you know. I mean, if he's announced this decision now. It means that maybe the engagement took place somewhere a year ago. 
So basically, we should see it as an opportunity, as he argues, to, to move to a, a bigger platform. The engagement may have taken place mm. about a year ago, but same way, I would also uh, want to think that the engagement to, you know, change for, you know, ownership to change at Barclays happened a long time ago. Well, maybe you might be privy to that, but his argument is that, well, let's see this one as an opportunity to move to a bigger platform. And that is his argument that he's been making the world. I see this as a fine opportunity. Let me take it. Whether Barclays Bank is going to change to a new uh, uh, bank in Africa, that w that is not the problem. Okay. Now tell me about this other story about uh, Ghana's uh, tuna being banned from the European Union. What exactly is it, happening? It is not only Ghana, but as well as other West African countries. Now, EU is very particular, particular about how the tuna fish is caught and exported to Europe. So the argument is that. We have to be careful where, which waters or areas this tuna has been caught from and exported to European Union. Now, it has to be regulated very, very well. Before a vessel comes in to get this tuna, it has to be licensed. Now, what we are, what we are seeing or what the EU says they are hearing is that most of these vessels have not been licensed. And in terms of strict regulation, we are not having that in some waters in West Africa. So hold on there, put things right before you again start exporting this fish to our market and region. It's always been a pleasure to, you know, go to European markets and see uh, to, to see, you know, Ghana, Ghana tuna in, in the shops. What it means now is that uh, this, uh, all these uh, products, tuna products, are going to be returned or can't go they into the They are being returned as we speak right now. I mean, we know that uh, Pioneer Food Canary is one of the biggest exporters to the European market producing for John West and other labels as well. So we understand that EU or the European countries are in the process of returning most of them. I mean, you could put a value of about uh, $20 million on that one. And Pioneer Food Company is one of the biggest companies that will be affected because they export a lot in the European market. Already, we also understand that about 300 workers of uh, Pioneer Food Country Canary are going to be laid off as a result of this action. It's a pretty serious situation. Very what bad. is the government doing about it? Well, we. Today they set up a five-member committee to try and investigate what really the problem is. Now in the interim, they've also put some measures in place in trying to step up the regulation of our territory in terms of who comes in to take the tuna fish from here and ensure that at least these interim measures will appease European authorities so they might ease the action a little bit. Thank you very much, uh, George Raffi from the Joy Business Desk. Now, you're watching the news on the Joy News channel. Next up, we bring you some smart investment tips. Great. Good evening to you, of course. It's now time for sports. Let's check out the latest in it. And head coach of the Sudan national team, Mohamed Abdullah, is counting on the special people of Kumasi to propel his team to beat Ghana in Sunday's World Cup qualifier. The Nile Crocodiles arrive in the country today ahead of a hugely anticipated clash at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Joy Sports caught up with Mohamed Abdullah on arrival at the Kotoka International Airport in Accra. I think it will be a big match. We prepared ourselves uh, in short time because 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, the regulation, they always put uh, the big teams who uh, have the advantage of uh, players playing out, out of, the, of the continent, coming from our side. Uh, they gave them the advantage because now you see uh, my, my, my players, uh, my team is consists of all based players, home based playing in competitions in, in uh, Africa and uh, before five days we have three three clubs playing in, in Confederation Cup and, uh, and Champions. So two teams playing uh, away away matches in, in Cote d'Ivoire and, uh, and, and in, in uh, Angola and the third in Khartoum home. So it's difficult for us to collect the players in ample time to, to, to prepare. So we have we practice only one day in Khartoum and then we travel here. So, uh, but I think uh, our players, our team is a good unit. We played several matches together and then we experienced to play Ghana before. Uh, I hope we do good. All right. Uh, meanwhile, the Black Stars beat Division 1 side Asokwa Deportivo 5-0 in a friendly game this afternoon at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Of course, uh, Debutants from Pong as well as Mahatma Otu were on target for the Black Stars. Good news there. Let's switch the sports and get into boxing. And former world boxing champion Joshua Clotty says Joseph Agbeko has the ability to return to world championship status in Friday's IBO bantamweight title bout with Colombian Luis Melendez at the Cross Sports Stadium. He was present at Joseph Agbeko's final workout session at the Bridge Gym and spoke to Joy Sports afterwards. I'm here to support my friend, my brother. My everything is fighting on Friday, and I want everybody to come and cheer him up because this is a very important fight for you, for me, for him, for Ghana. So I want everybody to come and cheer him. He's thinking about the weight making. Then the next thing, how is he gonna eat and become a girl his body? And the third thing, he have to think about the fight. Wow, I'm gonna fight this guy in front of my own people. I have to impress everybody. I have to win convincingly. I have to do something for the people to like me. I am very, very much sure that this is Ghana. We're fighting in front of the uh, people. I think uh, uh, you have to do everything to come out with knockout or a very nice, convincing win, which I'm very, very much sure that he's going to do that. Of course, you can get some tickets of this all-important bout at the front desk of Joy FM. And also, there is a Joy FM big workout taking place on Saturday at the Independence Square from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. That will be all sports. My name is George Adi Jr. Have a good night. Prodigal, a member of the Hip Life group VIP, has released his single track titled DJ. Now, after the release this morning, many VIP fans and music enthusiasts have been wondering if Prodigal is parting ways with the group. Right. Uh. Hello, Mr. DJ. I love the way you put my song, song, replay. Uh. I want to thank all the DJs for playing my songs. Prodigal is the name. I mean, my grandfather used to call me because back in the days, I don't know money stay home. So when I go and come back, I'd be like, hey, the prodigal son is back. You say it nicely, you are stubborn. Yeah, man, I was, <laughs> So, I mean, this time. Hey, DJ Black, we way back. The love I get for you, best me back. Sweet Jeremy, I love your melody. So, sister, you real sister. For Plumsy, man, it's coming out with some, some, something extraordinary. Also I mean, off. letter to hip life. So just letter imagine to what's going to be. Good. Yeah, letter mm -hmm. to hip life. And Lazy will come, I mean, Zia will come out with something good too for the grown and sexy people, you know? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we're trying to give the fans what we have. We have, Variety. we have, I mean, have we have a, a lot menu. of phones. I mean, we have a whole lot of songs, man. So, I mean, we're trying to like give everything out to the people. DJ mm -hmm. DJ Booty Brown, give me the good sound. Some me be, what me be, any Dr. Browns. DJ Lord, yeah. Like, I can drop what I have. Lazy can drop, I mean, Zill can drop what they have. Promise can drop what they have. But we're still doing VIP. Mm. Under the umbrella of VIP. Okay. You understand? We're just trying to, I mean, spread our wings, give the fans what they want individually. Because my style is different. Zero style is different. Promise style is different. Mm. And when it's VIP, we're still doing VIP. But individually, we can still do our stuffs and give it to the fans under the umbrella of VIP. I'm so blessed I don't know what to say Because together we've come such a long way From my way to don't play This one basically go like, Hello Mr. DJ, I love the way you put my songs on replay 
I want to thank all the DJs for playing my songs every day. DJ Black, we way back. The love I got for you, past made back. Sweet Jeremy. I Right on that bra note, that's all for showbiz. Change your life. Dead Dell. With big wins every day. Dead Dell. On Airtel's Dead Dell promotion. Dead Dell. Win Honda cars. Trips to the UK with shopping money. A year supply of shopping vouchers, Samsung phones, and tablets. To win, gather points every time you top up. Make calls, SMS, use the internet, transact using Airtel money services, or join the Airtel family. And every day you reach your Obolobo value, your points are multiplied by five times. The more you use, the more your chances of winning. Change your life with Airtel's Daredevil promotion. Promotion runs up to the 28th of February, 2013. Airtel, why you Daredevil? Right, that's it for the bulletin, but before we go, a quick look at our top stories. Government has assured residents of Kumasi it is in control of the security situation in the city and elsewhere around the country. Out there on the streets of Kumasi, there's evidence the police have stepped up their presence. Catholics, the Catholic Bishops' conferences weighed in on the teachers' strike and urged government to ensure a speedy resolution of the situation. The Accra Mayor and presiding member of the Accra Metropol of the Metropolitan Assembly have settled a feud following between them following the intervention by the sector minister. And we've been telling you the story about health care within the Insawan prisons. And then in business, the Barclays MD is on the move to stand chart Africa. That's it. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Israel Lai. Have a good evening. Owned by Backlist PLC.